Are you serious? Hello, this is How to Kill an Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy. I'm Sean. And this is a show where Sean and I scour the internet and find some funny stuff, find some weird stuff, find some funky stuff and crack on. Now, um, it's been a while, isn't it, Sean? It's been a while. Been a while, bro. But it's good to be back in the studio, man. Likewise. Yeah, man. You're looking well. Thanks, bro. You look relaxed. You look calm. I am. You look like you, you have... put me at ease, bro. <laughs> this is. <laughs> You're welcome, bro. You're welcome, bro. Uh, but man, I think we should just stop messing around and kick right on with the first part yeah, of the show, around, bro. which on. is where we uh, find some jokes and and we've got a little bit of a twist. I've got a little small surprise for you as well coming up after this. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. And that is what we call a throw forward in the broadcasting throw game, forward. designed to keep people around for that little bit longer, like the last drink at the pub. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> for me anyway <laughs> right time for our jokes of the week. Week, 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 week Sean a bear walks into a bar in Billings Montana and sits down he bangs on the bar with his paw and demands a beer the bartender approaches and says we don't serve beer to bears in bars in Billings the bear becoming angry demands that he is served a beer the bartender tells him more forcefully we don't serve beer to belligerent bears in bars in billings the bear very angrily now says if you don't serve me a beer i'm gonna eat that lady sitting at the end of the bar the bartender says the bartender says whoa sorry we don't serve beer to belligerent bully bears in bars in billings so the bear says fuck it goes to the end of the bar and as promised eats the woman comes back to his seat and says i want a beer the bartender says, sorry, we don't serve beer to belligerent bully bears in bars in Billings who are on drugs. The bear says, I'm not on drugs. The bartender says, you are now. That was a barbiturate. <laughs> it came out of there, it? It was a right hook out of nowhere, yeah? <laughs> I'm so proud. I almost Ooh, did over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was almost flawless. 9.7 foot for eight. Hey. I think that was a 9.9 that was, All right, that cool, was, cool Jeez Cool I, I wasn't even like, I, I stopped listening to the joke I was just like How is he not How is he not fucking it up <laughs> You're done now yeah. That's it yeah. Should we just call it there Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Thank thanks, thanks guys Cheers. Yeah that was how to kill it <laughs> <laughs> All right. A man goes to a hotel And asks the manager How much for a room The manager says It's a hundred dollars For a regular room And fifteen dollars If you make your own bed Excitedly the man says all right, I'll make my own bed then. Sure, I'll go and get some nails in the wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great, that's a proper dad one. Yeah, I like that one, I like that one. All right. I heard that one of those adult film stars was making a world record attempt in my town. You know the one where they bump uglies with as many people as possible in one hour? <laughs> Outraged, I went to see if I could do something about it. When I got to the hall where it was going on, I saw a queue of about 150 people waiting their turn. My stomach turned at the disgusting carnal display. All of a sudden, I was filled with a righteous wrath and I set upon those lust-filled demons with the strength of 20 men. One after another, the men in the queue were laid low by my mighty fists as it was in the days of Samson. And nobody was laughing when I was done. I guess I punched up the fuck line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I've come, I feel like I've come with some Oy. hookity hooks Oy, today. Good energy though. And I finally I got through it. it. Yeah. All right. A man was hunting when a gust of wind blew. The gun fell over and discharged, shooting him in the genitals. Several hours later, lying in a hospital, lying in the hospital bed he was approached by his doctor well sir i have some good news and some bad news the good news is that you're going to be okay the damage was local to your groin and there's very little internal damage and we were able to remove all of the buckshot what's the bad news asked the hunter the bad news is that there was some pretty extensive buckshot damage done to your willy which left quite a few holes in it i'm going to have to refer you to my sister well i guess that isn't too bad the hunter replied is your sister a plastic surgeon not exactly answered the doctor she's a flute player in the boston symphony orchestra she's going to teach you where to put your fingers so you don't piss in your eye <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it doesn't make any sense but it's still, it's still tickled me. yeah man oh man all right no, that was a good one <laughs> A soldier who wasn't the sharpest tool in the box was on sentry duty at the main gate and their orders were clear. No car was to enter unless it had a special sticker on the windshield. A big army car came up and the general was seated in the back. The sentry said, halt, who goes there? 
The chauffeur, who was a corporal, said, General Wheeler, I'm sorry, I can't let you through, said the sentry. You have to have a sticker on the windshield. The general said, drive on. The sentry said, hold it. You really can't come through. I have orders to shoot if you try driving in without a sticker. The general repeated, I'm telling you, son, drive on. So the sentry took out their weapon, ready to discharge. They walked up to the rear window of the car and, and shouted through it. General, I'm new at this. Do I shoot you or the driver? It could just also be me being slow. I'm like, cool. They just don't know who to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> this might be one that gets deleted. <laughs> we'll keep it for now, given that. I'm sorry, Sean. They bro, get, I promise the next bro, one's a good sometimes, one. Sometimes it's just me. Uh, uh, um, just a bit, uh, you know, it takes me a minute. Uh, a girl tells her mother after school, Mum, I got a gold star today for recruit for reciting the whole alphabet. The rest of my class only knows three or four letters. Well done, darling, the girl's mother replies. That's because you're blonde. After returning from school the next day, the girl tells her mother, I'm the smartest student in my maths class. I can count up to 15. Everyone else stopped at five. Well done, replies the mother again. That's because you're blonde. The following day, the girl says to her mum, mum, Today we measured our chest in class and mine is the largest. Is that also because I'm blonde? No, darling. That's because you're 18. <laughs> I'm going to have to oh. substitute some of these with um, other coloured haired people. Oh, no. Was, uh, <laughs> maybe yeah, in the future, yeah. All right. All right cool. Let me have a go at one then. Okay. You know, I've done the same thing, right? Stupid Sam was about two hours away from San Diego when they were flagged down by a man whose truck had broken down. The man walked up to the car and said, are you going to San Diego? Sure, answered Sam. Do you need a lift? No, nope, not for me. I'll be spending the next three hours fixing my truck. The problem is I've got two chimpanzees in the back and they need to be taken to San Diego Zoo. They're a bit stressed already and I don't want to keep them on the road all day. Could you possibly take them to the zoo for me? I'll give you 100 bucks for your trouble. I'd be happy to, said Sam. So the two chimpanzees were ushered to the back seats of Sam's car and carefully strapped into their seatbelts and off they went. Five hours later, the truck driver was driving through the heart of San Diego when suddenly he was horrified. There was Sam walking down the street holding hands with the two chimps. With a screech of brakes, he pulled over to the side, ran over and said, what are you doing here? I gave you a hundred bucks to take these chimpanzees to the zoo. Yeah, I know you did, said Sam, but we had no money left, so now we're going to the park. <laughs> I, got, uh, I, I got it like right uh, just right, right, yeah, like, it, yeah. oh. right. husband and wife went to see a marriage counsellor after he listened to a 20 minute tirade about how bad a husband he was the counsellor stood up went round to his wife and embraced her and gave her a hug then turned to the husband and said this is what your wife needs three times a week. Do you think you can manage that? Husband replies, Well, I can drop her off Mondays and Wednesdays, but I play golf on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel that would be an accurate response. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Right, two married buddies were out drinking one night. One turns to the other and says, You know, I don't know what else to do. Whenever I come home after I've been out drinking, I turn the headlights off before I get to the driveway. I shut the engine off and coast up to the garage. I take my shoes off before I go into the house. I sneak up the stairs. I get undressed in the bathroom and I ease into bed and my wife still wakes up and yells at me for staying out so late. His buddy looks at him and says, ah, you're doing it all wrong. You obviously are taking the wrong approach. I screech into the driveway, slam the door, storm up the steps, throw my shoes into the closet, jump into bed, rub my hands on my wife's ass and say, how about a bit of fun? And she's always sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a good one. <laughs> love it, I love it. <clears throat> all right. A woman was in bed with her lover when she heard her husband opening the front door. Hurry, she said, stand in the corner. She rubbed baby oil all over him and then dusted him with talcum powder. Don't move until I tell you, she said. Pretend that you're a statue. The husband walks in. What's this? He inquires. Oh, it's a statue, she replied. The Smiths bought one and I liked it so much that I got one for us too. No more was said. Not even when they went to bed. Around 2am, the husband got up, went to the kitchen and returned with a sandwich and a beer. 
Here, he said to the statue, have this. I stood for two days at the Smiths and nobody offered me a fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy. All right, all right. There's a lot of man and wife ones here. This is a, this is one of the ones that I wanted to save for a reason that we can't chat on the pod, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Okay. Husband walks into the bedroom carrying a glass of water and two aspirin. Wife, what's that for? Husband, for your headache. Wife, but I don't have a headache. Husband, well, I guess that means we can have sex then. <laughs> Wife, you know what? I have this nauseating feeling in my stomach. I don't think it would be very comfortable. Sorry, honey. Husband, oh no, when did that start? Wife, about 10 seconds ago. Wife, do you have a headache, dear? Husband, no. And he looked a little bit confused. Wife, well then, I guess you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I like that. That was fantastic. That's a tough one. That's a tough, that's a tough back and forth one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, yeah, I'm <laughs> clearly lost about to read it. Yeah. Okay. okay. This one. <laughs> okay. A teacher asked the face off this one. Okay. Right. A teacher asked the kids in a third grade class, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" Little Johnny says, "I want to start out as a, out as a fighter pilot." Then be a billionaire, go to the most expensive clubs, find me the finest whore, give her a Ferrari worth a million bucks, an apartment in Copacabana, a mansion in Paris, a jet to travel throughout Europe, an infinite visa card, and all while banging her like a loose screen door in a hurricane. The teacher, shocked and not knowing what to do with this horrible response from little Johnny, decides not to acknowledge what he said and simply tries to continue with the lesson. And how about you, Sarah? I want to be Johnny's whore. <laughs> <laughs> I just said for yourself. I, I, can, I can see it coming. I can see it coming. All right. <clears throat> this is more of a chuckle than a laugh. I'll be honest with you. Okay. An IT support manager leaves a conference only to find that the last train is gone. Being a devout Christian, he falls to his knees and prays and says, God, if it lies within your will, please give me a way to get home tonight. To his astonishment, there's a swirl of ethereal music and an angel descends from the clowns. A moment later, a shiny black Audi appears where it wasn't before. Hail thou who has found favour with the Lord, proclaims the angel. Here is your way home. And the angel throws in the keys to the Audi. Wicked. An hour or so later, the manager is parking outside his house and once again he kneels and prays. Lord who has heard my prayer and has been gracious unto me, I now ask that you take back this gift. I only wanted to get home and you have done all that I could have asked, so let me not be tempted by desire for material gains. There's another swell of ethereal music and a still more glorious creature appears. The manager bows reverently and says, Have I the honour of addressing Michael or are you Gabriel? Why do you ask, says the radiant figure. Because, says the IT manager, if you are here to undo the function of an angel, you must be an archangel. Boom. <laughs> I told you it was a chuckle at most. It was a chuckle at most. I was a chuckle at most. <laughs> it took me it, again. I'm just slow sometimes, man. But it and undo. That was the. That was the. That was it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was deserved. That was a stinker. For those just listening, Sean looked at me like, "Right, and this is a toughie, isn't it? <laughs> this is a tough day." Yeah, go on. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do what um, the teacher did. I'm just gonna, just gonna just carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A male patient just recovered successfully from a sex threatening health attack. Mm -hmm. He was wearing an oxygen mask over his mouth and nose and laying on the hospital bed. A young nurse came to cleanse his body with a sponge. The patient mumbled, Are my testicles black? The nurse replied, I don't know, sir. I'm just setting you clean. The patient repeated again, Are my testicles black? The nurse was quite embarrassed to answer the question and said, Sir, everything should be okay. The patient just kept on asking again and again, Are my testicles black? Nurse could not bear a patient concern so much, so she raised his gown, moved her hand to find and grab his penis and testicle, moved it around, checked very closely, and suddenly, out of nowhere, the man ejaculated on the nurse's hand. The man pulls off his oxygen mask, embarrassed at the fiasco, and says, Ma'am, thank you, but I still need to know, are my test results back? <laughs> Did you see that coming? <laughs> Not at all. That was good. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I love it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. Have, oh, oh. That. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you could have done that, innit? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, bro. <sighs> Half <-hearted. laughs> yeah. 
A man was in the bedroom waiting for his wife in the shower as they both prepare for a night of intimacy. Whilst he was sitting naked on the side of the bed unwrapping his condom, his son, little Johnny, suddenly opens the door and enters the room. In an attempt to hide the condom and his exposed member, the dad bent over as if he was looking under the bed. Little Johnny asked curiously, What are you doing, dad? The dad quickly replied, I thought I saw a rat go under the bed. Little Johnny replied, What are you, what are you trying to do? Fuck him. <laughs> 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 hey, that's okay. Little Johnny, innit? Hey, little Johnny. Little Johnny's a little sick Johnny, brain. Little Johnny. Sick guy. Every time. <clears throat> oh, this is a bit of a long one, but I'm going for it. All right. right. A father wants to see how well his two sons will do in life, so he gives each one of them a duck and says, See what you can get for it. The oldest son holds onto the duck until it lays a clutch of eggs and then takes it to the market in a nearby town where he sells the duck and the eggs for $10. He comes home and tells the story to his father, who then ex- exclaims, My brilliant son! What a businessman you are going to be. The father then turns to the younger son, who is a bit of a slacker, and says, what about you? So the younger son grabs his duck and starts to saunter into town. Along the way, he sees this really pretty girl hanging out the window who calls him. Hey, kid, give me the duck and I'll sleep with you. He doesn't have to think twice. He races up to her room and they get on with it. Now, this younger son is young randy and really good panting breathlessly the girl says do it again and i'll give you the duck back so he does and she does and they're both less smiling drained and really happy so smiling happy and not paying attention he walks out of the door and down the street just as a car comes careering round the corner the scared duck flies out of the boy's hand and right into the windshield of, of the out of control car once things have settled down the driver goes up to the boy and says I'm really, really sorry about your duck. Here's a dollar to pay you for your loss. A dollar? The boy cries. What am I going to tell my father? My brother got $10 for his duck. Not my problem. Here's a dollar. Take it or leave it. So dejected, the younger son returns home and decides that the best thing to do is to tell the truth and speak to his father. The duck and the girl and girl and the duck and the car and everything. His father just looks at him and says, my brilliant son. What a success you are going to be in life. You got a fuck for a duck, a duck for a fuck, and a buck for a fucked up duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more of a tongue twister. More of a tongue twister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> got a couple of ones here, a little bit shorter. So here we go. A parent is driving down the road with their young kid in the back seat. Suddenly, from a truck in front, a dildo flies out and hits the windshield. The kid says, What was that? Not knowing what to say, the parent responds, Oh dear, it's it's just a bug. The kid thinks for a second and says, That bug had a huge cock. Tight one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. After 20 years... Okay, oh, wait. Husband always insists on making love in the dark. But after 20 years of this, his wife turns on the light and finds him holding a vibrator. She goes ballistic. You impotent bastard. How could you lie to me for all these years? The husband looks at her straight in the eyes and calmly says, I'll explain the toy. You explain the kids. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Got some explaining to do. All right, I got one more for you, Sean. All right, all right. I was leaving the office for the day when I found the CEO standing in front of a shredder with a piece of paper in his hand. Listen, he said, this is a very sensitive and important document and my secretary has gone for the night. Can you make this thing work for me? Sure, I said. So I turned the machine on, inserted the paper and pressed the start button. Excellent, he said as the paper disappeared into the machine. I just need one copy. I'll give you the first line again. (laughs) I was leaving the office the other day when I found the CEO standing in front of the shredder with a piece of paper in his hand. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's, 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 it's all, isn't it? There you go. Again, see, yeah. I'm telling you, so I'm, I'm just. Uh, sometimes I'm just not on the ball, man. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> right. This is a very short one. Okay. You can tell how much a woman likes you by her feet. Do you know this? No. If they are behind her ears, she really, really likes you. <laughs> 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 oh man that's fantastic man Sean I've got to say it's been, it's been a good one 
It's been a tough. We tripped over a couple of we words, though. <laughs> we tripped over yeah, everything. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But that has been our jokes <laughs> of the week. We, we, but we, Sean, we, we. I mean, I won't drag out too many of those. But we're getting a nice selection of people that are actually getting in contact with the show. So, like we uh, have said in the past, you can contact us on Facebook. You can nice. DM us Instagram jokes. You can send us funny things. And, and we've had a few people that have sent us some audience jokes. So this is audience jokes of the week. We, 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 okay. We, we, and as I'm such a rebel, immediately. Immediately, I'm going to digress slightly because this one actually came from a producer that I worked with and it was on a mug in his house that he got as a gift. It's a tight and short one. Why does Dr. Pepper come in a bottle? Because his wife died. <laughs> oh, I knew this one. <laughs> oh, classic. Uh, all right. That's it. Cool. Uh, right. Because we've done so many jokes, I'll, I'll knock out a couple, but then we'll keep pushing. This is from Grace uh, Kajadai Dahi. She said, sent us this over, I think it was uh, Insta. A urologist in London had a water leak in his bathroom on a Sunday. He called a plumber who charged him 50 quid call out fee plus another 100 quid for fixing the problem in 15 minutes. The urologist was shocked and said to the plumber, I'm a urologist. I fix human waterworks and I don't get paid this much. The plumber replied, <laughs> the plumber replied, I know that's why I quit urology and I took up plumbing. No risks, no litigation, more money and the taps never bleed. <laughs> but, <laughs> <and it's, laughs> I was too busy looking at anesthesia. <laughs> and, uh, anesthe- oh, and, uh, anesthesiologist. No, it's anesthesia. And, uh, and uh, anesthesist. This is anesthetist. Anesthetist. Can you just let us know? Anesthetist. Yeah, anesthetist. Anesthetist. Yeah, all right. Wait, 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 wait. Anesthetist. That's it. Anesthetist. All right. I, I can't do any more after. All right. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do one more. Monk, who claim. Oh, this is from. I don't know this is from. Monk. <laughs> Oh, no, sorry, this is from David James. Sorry, David James, Facebook, send it DM. Monk, who claims he saw the face of Jesus in his margarine tub, said, I can't believe it's not Buddha. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. oh, And this one is from Saj, and this is a DM that has come in on Facebook. It's the last one I do. I try not to take life too seriously, said the headsman, putting on a costume clown before an execution. <laughs> there you go. Oh. So there was our audience jokes of the week. Thank, Thank you, guys. Week, week, Keep sending them in. Yes, um, we've got quite a few. Um, we've got some proper spicy ones as well, which are fantastic. Uh, shout out to the likes of Oscar. We've seen some jokes coming from you uh, and some other people too. And we will get through to them. Uh, even, even my mum has sent in a joke. Uh, yeah, so really? I've got yeah, I've got a few jokes from her which will come in, uh, but I think it's time for us to move on to another part of the show, Sean. Uh, would you? I believe you have something to bring to the table today. I do. What do you have to bring to the table? How are we, we going to put this? How are we going to put this? Uh, My finger is poised on mm, a button, bro. Mm, bucket list things to piss people off. Of the week, <laughs> week, week, off. week, week. Of the, of the week off, off, yeah. off of the week you know off of the week alright cool alright all right, but what would you go, so, go for it this, what, 1 to 9 or well, 9 to 1 9 to oh, should we go nine, we'll go 9 to 1 we'll go okay, 9 to cool. 1 right alright so do you want to do another sorry Alex I'm actually about uh, for the social just do like not of the week bit but whatever you're going to call it actually it's not even I, it, it's not even one of them ones to piss people off it's just to it's, fuck with people it's to, to a degree bucket list to fuck bucket list to fuck with people it doesn't really it doesn't roll off the tongue does it bucket list of things to do to mess with people before you die <sighs> things to do to mess with people before you d- nine things to do with people nine things to do to mess with people before you die nine things to to nine things to do to mess with people before you die go <sighs> number one make vanilla pudding put in number t- <laughs> we starting from number nine number nine buy a parrot teach the parrot to say help I've been turned into a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Change name to Simon. Speak in third person. That is good. <laughs> Number seven. Become a doctor. Change last name to Acula. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is good. This is good. Number six. Run into a store 
Ask what year it is. When someone answers, yell, it works, and run out <laughs> cheering. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, major in philosophy, ask people why they would like fries with that. Ooh. <laughs> Stop. Number four, get into a crowded elevator, turn around and say, I bet you're wondering why I gathered you here today. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, wear a shirt that says life and hand out lemons on a street corner. Hey. Number two, and probably one of my favorites, hire two private investigators, get them to follow each other. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute fuckeries. Uh, and a third one to film it as and well. The, yeah, and yeah, a third yeah, one to film it. Yeah. And number one, make vanilla pudding, put it in a mayo jar, consume in public. Oh, that's sick. So what are we doing first? I want to do the run into the store. Can we do that one? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, heavy, man. So those was our, those were our things to do before you, bucket list of things to do to fuck with people before you die. Of the week. <laughs> <laughs> of the week. I love it, man. Um, <clears throat> time for some new stories though. We do like to look at some new story stuff. Uh, and Sean, there's been a lot of talk about AI. There's been a lot of talk about tech and stuff like that. And it, I don't get me wrong. I love AI. I love the idea of chat GPT. I love the fact you can ask it to like, help you with your resume and or whatever, or CV or whatever, write your letters and stuff. That's cool. But I miss good old Black Mirror style kind of, you know, new stories or ideas. You know, you have a scientist that really wants to do something that you've not really, you didn't think could be feasible in our lifetime. So this is our... Prison of the future of the week. <laughs> week, week, week. There's a guy. There's a guy called Hashim Al Ghali. Uh, sounds like he, yeah, Hashim Al Ghali. Got it right. He's a Berlin-based filmmaker and science communicator. So he makes film and does science. And he has proposed an idea called Cognify, a concept that aims to replace traditional prisons with a rehabilitation facility that uses artificial memories to reform criminals. So basically, you would use brain implants and VR like technology to insert fake memories of crimes. I don't think it says crimes here, but I think fake memories of time, maybe, into offenders' minds, showing them their actions. Oh, no shit. Oh, wow. It inserts fake memories of crimes into offenders' minds, showing them their own actions from the victim's perspective. The system also triggers emotions like guilt and regret, which some criminals might not naturally grill, uh, feel. Wow. Uh, he believes that this could lower repeat offences, cut costs and reduce time in prison, allowing offenders to be released in days instead of years. Now, right? It's good. So that this kind of works on remorse, right? Yeah, remorse. Because what you don't want is a criminal that loves that shit. <laughs> the criminal's like, yeah, ah, stab me. Got, ah. got any more of those memories? Yeah, yeah. Give me some more of those. Like, no Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, yeah, man. So it's kind of Black Mirror, isn't it? Like Black Mirror. I don't think there was there was no there was someone in jail in an episode of Black Mirror, and I think they. I were, haven't seen it. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I've seen like a few eps, but I haven't seen the one that you're specifically yeah. speaking about. Won't spoil it, but there's a guy serving time, so he just feels like time is a lot of time has passed, but a little has passed. Good job, um, good job. I don't know how I feel about this, you know, Sean, because like isn't part of, and I'm actually going to be a little bit serious for a while. Isn't part of going to prison, coming out, and being a bit old, like you lose your youth. Like, it's not just memories. If I went into jail now for 50 years, that's it. I'm not coming out. Or if, if I'm going for 20 years, I'm not going to be able to come out and, like, you know, run a run a 5K. Or, like, I'll be old. I'll be an old man. You might be able to. Why, why would you not? Why would you I not? I mean, I can't really run a 5K now. So yeah, that's well, a bit I was going to say, if you're talking about me, then, <laughs> yeah. Halo 5K is going to run at any time. Um, yeah, man. Um, isn't part of it losing your actual life? Do you know what I mean? If that makes sense, your actual I mean, I mean it obviously is... It, it, hopefully, um, yeah. most of the time is is, is uh, uh, linked to how severe the the, the crime is. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So, all right. Say you got ten years for armed uh, burglary, right? So they make, but you'd get that. In, I don't know if that's what you get now. Armed burglary, you get ten years here, right? What if they said we'll offer you twenty years, but it'll feel like twenty years, but we'll do do the cognify thing instead. So you so, so you'd come back as you are right now because you'd only serve a little amount of time, they put some memories in. Would you take more time if they inserted more of a sentence into your head digitally than doing the time so, in real life? So, so what, it would feel like 20 years? Feel like 20 years, but you pop back right now. Boop, be back. Or do 10 real years? Oh, probably the first one. 
you do the 20 years i think so yeah because it's because it's it's an extra 10 years of false of, of it's not actually real when then yeah. you, get to, you get to live your life wouldn't it yeah you get to run your 5k when you yeah. get out you're like yeah. okay that's okay and they they can they aim to reform criminals quickly by manipulating memories um Additionally, the technology is still mostly theoretical and its real life implications could be harmful. Yes, I think that's quite obvious. <laughs> right now, <Little. laughs> how about we flip it on its head? Okay. I could take you to Disney for a tenner, just put the memories in. How good's that? We want to, you, no queuing. No queuing, bruv. Just you get to see Mickey, Goofy. What you do is just get like, you just get a wave of nostalgia off yeah. this being like, oh, oh my gosh, that was amazing. amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a weird one. Like, wh whenever I see people like that that th theoretically have stuff like this, I'm like, would you really, would you really want it? Like, you can hit, like, would you really, like, would you really want this technology to be around? Because I think as humans, as we are learning slowly, we are just finding ways to abuse every single type of stuff. <laughs> I mean, could they put computer game memories in my head? I would love to experience some COD in that, like, but feel it though. Well, if I, if I can just, um, mention, do you, you, you remember, um, Neuralink? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you've, did you, have you seen the, um, the guy's name is Nolan's f something. And he's the first person to have the transplant. So or, sorry, he's the first person to have the Neuralink installed in his in his brain. So it's the it's the it's the microchip that eventually we're hoping will be the ultimate symbiosis of man and machine, right? That's what they're aiming Cyborg for. Cyborg symbiosis yeah. at its finest. <clears throat> but he's the first guy to have it done. He's the first guy to have it done. He's a quadriplegic, mm -hmm. so he only has um, he's only able to move his uh, from the neck upwards. Yeah, um, quite an articulate guy. Very very interesting. Like, and it's obviously the first iteration mm. of a Neuralink, but already, um, like, he's been able to play video games. Um, he's so, what, like, there's things where he'll, like, he will map. So, he can't, let's say, he can't actually, like, move his arm, but he can still, he can still send the signals yeah. to say for your arm to yeah. move. And then they can map that. So, if, if, even though he won't move, in his, in his brain, he will go like this, and then the mouse will move to the right. Hey. So, they, so they, they will um, assign uh, it that way. Like there would be like, when you do that, it will go left. But then what he said was, it started to move before he even thought about it. Because he was saying, uh, yeah. if you go to pick up something, yep. you've, you've, yep. you, it's like preemptive, right? Yep. It's got yep. to send a signal back. And so it started doing that way. He was like, I think, oh, the mouse moved already. Yeah. It, yeah already. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, it, it was very, very interesting talking about the, he was like, ah. Oh, do I be the first person? Because that's cool in a way, right? Yeah. To be like, he might, if, if, if a movie was made in the future, he it would be in it, yeah, right? Yeah. Like the first person. But also it's like, oh, maybe I should have waited and like a few more iterations and yeah, down yeah, the line yeah. in it and stuff like that. It's like, if you could only buy one iPhone and you got the first one, you're pissed, <laughs> isn't it? You're pissed. Everyone's air dropping <laughs> shit. Everyone's like got more than a hundred photos in their phone. <laughs> yeah, I get that, man. But no, he's a pioneer for that. And I think it's an in interesting look at the mind because you're right. Like I th I th I, I've always remember this fact. When you pick up something hot and drop it, you drop it before your mind actually has the full signal of the, of the hurt. It's a reflex reaction. So he, you're what he's, and and also when we, and there's also another theory, or maybe it's been proven true that we, everything we experience actually doesn't happen instantly for us. There's a bit more process in time, but we can't even comprehend that because it's always there and we're used to it. So he might be experiencing him, like we might think to, like you said, think to move your arm before you move it. He's experiencing that because digitally that mouse thing moves immediately, and also, like. We've seen people remap their brains, people with spinal damage before. Like mm. so someone has a like severed sp severed bits of their spine and their brain like remaps how to walk again. Yeah. And it looks like when kids are learning to walk, they're mapping it for the first time. So I can't even imagine the things that I could map. This could get, be very dangerous, Sean, because I could be sitting there watching the football and as my belly starts rumbling, a pizza delivery man <laughs> knocks on the door with three extra large oh, days. Does that stuffed crust dreamy? pizzas. Yeah, man. Don't you want that? On my mind, I've some might. wild <laughs> food places, bro. Chicken nuggets in my dream. All the chicken nuggets. <laughs> oh, man. So, so what ended up happening? What ended sorry, up? Actually, sorry, sorry. No, no yeah. what ended up happening to him was that it wasn't even like he had to move. It yeah. it started to read his thoughts, and yeah. that, that already is is like is pretty impressive. Um, very early on the journey, but you know, I've been I've followed the Neuralink 
kind of journey yeah. so it was really interesting to hear from the first person who's who's um had it installed so it's on youtube it's a, obviously on the joe rogan podcast he's done he's done plenty of um done plenty of pods but um heavy worth That's a good man just in the same ballpark i thought i'd mention it you like to drive right you've spoken about driving sim stuff would you if say we could get you a newer link mark free it's in all good would you ever want to play games like that and I was going to say, now actually, I'll ask you the first question. Would you want a game with just your mind? Can I, can I, I'm just going to say something before that. They, because the, the guy, he was, a, he was a gamer before his injury. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, he's had to watch all of his friend, friends for the past eight years play all these games. And yeah. he's like, so it's like the first time that he has. Um, and he was like, yeah, but moving forward, we're going to have to have our own league. Yeah, man. Because I have a, I ain't playing I, with you. Yeah. Because I have an auto bot. Which which I cannot miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and Joe Rogan was All like, right, right, is it? You sure, bruv? Yeah. Is he talking that smack? <laughs> What's his fucking tag? What's his gamer yeah, tag? Yeah. Let's go. Let's Wait, bust him Joe Rogan up, was like, oh, you should find like the, the, the like the best player in the world and yeah. just go and fuck with him, innit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. like snipe him from the other side of the map. Like, it's not, mad. Like, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah so, man. So, um, That's mad, man. You're going to have like Neuralink only things. Would you ever want to replace day to day stuff like driving, like normal driving with your mind? Because technically, you would be able to, from what we've said, you could ha harness a greater symbiosis with a machine. Not, and everyone always thinks like complex things like computers, but things like a car. We know that there is a different level to driving that a small number of humans can compete in F1. That's not, uh, the, the, you couldn't, me driving a normal car, I couldn't even get an F1 car going. Yeah. So would you ever want to like, you know? It would be like, it comes to a point where, when I'm driving, uh, whether that be sim racing or whatever, is like I run out of talent at a certain point. Yeah, and it would be quite nice to feel what it would be like to not run out of talent. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah from that perspective, it would be it would be kind of kind of mad. But um, I, I I kind of I think I would use it for. I don't think I would I would like kind of use it for that. It wouldn't be like the first. Mm. It would be like being able to learn things learn languages instantaneously be okay. able to um i mean it's my bar is so low i was literally just thinking if i leave the bathroom light on and i can see it creeping under the bedroom door i can turn it off with my mind <laughs> that's what i was thinking i was like that'd be great if i could be like lights off yeah i mean anything that an app could do you yeah. can do with your brain i suppose yeah, so that would be yeah it would be fairly easy but i mean that's like tip of the tip of the iceberg you, yeah. you should you should you should be able to um, you should be able to come up with like super complex, like really like do okay. super complex equations. Um, yeah. And and also you, you, you like, one of the things which is really interesting is, let's say I have a complex idea and I want the, I want you to yeah. understand that idea. What you can do is you can kind of like package it mm. in a certain way and I can send it over to you and you want to unpack it in a way in which it makes perfect sense to you that's where business breaks down isn't it because so, two people are trying to communicate and yeah like people don't get each other's visions mm. yeah that's fascinating i man. mean it's just i mean it, i mean from the initial things will be attempting to give people who have the loss loss of limbs etc being able yeah. to create new, new neural pathways to be able to walk again move their arms all that right. kind of stuff so it, hopefully with, even with this chap um with the later iterations hopefully yeah how long do you think till we get a robocop I don't even think it's that long, bro. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, like in the way, in the it's so it's mad to hearing him speak because he talks about every day they're discovering new stuff because they are literally because Joe Rogan was asking him simple questions. Have you done this? He's like, no, we haven't done that yet. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's every day is groundbreaking. Every day is something new. They're doing you know some basic stuff, um, but for him, it's you can imagine it's like super exciting. You it know? is, man. It is. I just keep thinking like what. What would I want to do? And I think my bar is quite low, as I'm sure you just heard. Like, I need to think about more stuff. But isn't one massive challenge also, right? If we can have to put some real um, blocks on it, because like how his mouse moved, and before he thought about it, you don't want your subconscious to start take, <laughs> taking over. Because, you know, it's like, imagine, what? like, you know, that's, that's your subconscious. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm fine with my subconscious. No like, worries. Could you, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, if you knew I could read minds, isn't it? The first thing you think is, oh, I definitely shouldn't think that. Oh, I'm thinking <laughs> it. <laughs> and everyone, everyone will be walking around going, <laughs> ah, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally be reading people's minds and 
Yeah, man. Thought patterns and all that kind of stuff. So then if the Neuralink did work, then this this stuff could happen, innit? You could fire some memories in if they worked out to do it or experiences or maybe make someone feel sad or scared. That's weird, isn't it? Like, induce you, you emotion. Could induce you emotion. Could, you could induce emotions because if you could, if you could find out what um, things are firing at mm. that certain point, then you can just Im- imitate that. Yeah, so you just be like, yeah, and then, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, cheer up, one second. Right. How's that, hey! mate? Hey, back in the room. Yeah, yeah. Oh a man, mood oh, regulation. Make me wow. two pints drunk, and I haven't drunk a pint. Oh, that's nice. And then you can just dial it back to one. Oh, I've got to drive now. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, just, uh, turn it all up to lick. Yeah, it? lick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll wow. just have one, but your Neuralink says, nah, 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 <laughs> one beer, nah, nah, nah. Let's throw two in the mix and blend. That's wild, you know. I've not really thought of that, man. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, what's crazy is that, like, it's. If you hear him explain, like, certain bits and bobs, you can already see how it is working, but it's still super early days. Um. And they've already, and they've had like issues where the the some of the tish, the fibers they're like less thinner than a human hair that connect to the brain. Some of them are detached, so they're trying to figure out why they've detached, and it gives you less feedback because of that and all oh. kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> can I like? Can we um uh in true Marcus style? I've got something I'd like to show you before we end the show. If that's all right. I've got another article. Do you mind firing over the mouse over here, please? I can fire over. Which mouse? This one? Uh, the other one, yes. Yeah, Multi-mouse game. Um, so something else I want to show you. Okay. Um, totally in the other direction. But I just thought I should uh, make man like Sean aware of it. Um, What's am I unaware of? There's a, <laughs> there's a bakery that's getting in, in, in a bit of trouble, mate. Uh, they're in Amsterdam. I don't know if that's enough to, to uh, so that you know about it, but a lot's going down, bro. And... Um, I just wanted to share it with you. Do you know what I mean? It's a Waffle House in many in many senses of the word. Uh, uh, its name is Rio. <laughs> I'll uh, make, I'll make the screen big so you can see it. Uh, yeah, its name is Rio. It's a Waffle House in Amsterdam, and uh, they serve phallic, yes, cream ph- phallus, filled, phallus shaped. Um, yeah. What would it be? It's like a shoe pastry. Yes, yes. Like a oh, I love chocolate eclairs. It, this takes a different. <laughs> this takes a different look. Yeah, it's like a chocolate eclair, eclair, but it is very phallic shaped, and they fill it full of cream, which you can choose. It's really, really popular uh, in Brazil. Sorry, I thought I said Amsterdam. It's not in Brazil. It's very, very popular. Oh, Amsterdam, uh, Amsterdam, Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amsterdam, oh, Brazil. My favorite spot. Yeah, it's a joint, man. Uh, people love it. It's very viral. But apparently, oh, they've got those oh. are the um, they've got some oysters in there. <laughs> they've got female genitalia as well, uh, and and they're serving them up. Do you want to see? Sean's going to quickly Italia. let us. Yeah, look, but okay, that's on the nose. Sean, there's a shot of someone biting into one. Can you just describe what they're doing right? What you see right now? It's covered in. It is covered in chocolate. It's, it's, got, a, it's got a stick, um, and that cream is all over the place. Yeah. So anyway, it is yeah. <laughs> so the Waffle House. Yeah, you're not allowed to. They're not allowed to sell it to minors. Okay. Yeah, they they get they're getting in trouble in Brazil. Uh, the chocolate covered treats uh, come with a little bit of a you know little bit of cream inside. Uh, Which I will we'll allow you to uh, use your imagination as to what that potentially could look like. I mean, then they know what they're doing in it. They know what they're doing. I was, do you know, what? I was quite pleasantly surprised at though. Quite a few fellas there, like as well. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I thought it was just going to be like bunch of bunch of giggly like people like that, but guys are like, no, I, I want. Give me an extra large one. You know, there's a guy that's always like over masculine. <laughs> I love it large. Got, I'll, have, I'll, I'll do two at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, in Rio. It's, uh, it's a fun little thing. Come on. I, understand, I don't understand why people are getting so... Why yeah. are people getting... I don't know. But it's called a putaria. 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 It sounds naughty and nice at the same time. Um, but well, the, you know what puta of, means, so I don't know yeah. exactly what... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but the Justice Ministry's so, so, Consumer Protection Agency is ordering the shop and similar businesses across the country to suspend sales to, well, obviously to minors and all products reproducing or suggesting the shape of human genitalia. genitalia. But I feel like if you start doing that, yeah, if you start stopping, well, they're, they're stopping them from selling them in the shape of genitalia, right? Yeah, I'm just saying if you st- again, all right, maybe to young kids if it's suggested in there, cool, whatever. But to adults, if you stop selling them, this is the start of a slippery slope. Yeah. Because back in my day, meat and two veg, yeah, <laughs> meant a very different thing. But like, ain't a lot of fruit and vegetable quite phallic in its look. It is. Carrot, cucumber, aubergine. I, 
I, I yeah this is this is going too far I think like it's it's a little it's a fad people will go and enjoy it they're, all they're doing is selling pastries okay I understand I understand if you don't want to if, if they're they're like oh, okay it's a it's an adult theme therefore yeah, yeah, yeah. we should we, we think that people should be 16 or, and above or, yeah, or, or whatever um they whatever age they deem fit allow people to have a bit of, have a bit fun, of fun man. Man. bite into a vulva shaped shoe pastry and yeah. uh you know, let you f- make film it and it's a bit of fun, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's a laugh. T- to be fair, it's one of those things. If I think about it too much, it's quite. I wouldn't. If I think about it too much, I see someone eat bited into a pastry like that. Like if it's the male one, I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, there is that. There is that. Yeah. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. Sque- uh, it turns into a place where there's a lot of squeamish guys. Yeah, man. Just yeah. Going, no, that, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, that was it, Sean. The quick one. Um. Before we bounce out of here, can I just ask how how you've been killing time this week, please, Sean? I what have I I ended up going to Silverstone. Oh yo! I ended up going to Silverstone last weekend, which was so I oh, was amazing. I it was the first first. Uh, you you've been to the Formula One before? I've right? been to been Silverstone as well. Yeah. And uh, you know I'm a big Formula One fan, big um, just racing fan in general. It yeah. was great. Friday to Sunday, uh, got a Ruboy camper van, which I've never I've never camped like that before. I had like the works like f- like full out full run. Um, like double bed that pulled out with um with um f- like running water you got yeah ever like full under lighting it was great man and like you could sleep two people up the top as well because it's got like yeah. a you could have stood up in it you can you can raise raise the roof raise the roof raise the roof was it uh was it a vw one was it, it, was, a Ford it one? was a vw i was uh, yeah. you know it was a choice between the new transport mm. or the old school scooby van yeah and I, I was like i wanted to go old school scooby van but yeah. i was also like I don't want it to break down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just, like, yeah. Just creature comfort. Exactly. And then the newer one has probably a bigger water tank, you know, air conditioning, I guess, if you need it. But it had a grill, hob. What? Like, yeah, grill, hob. Um, literally, it's wooden flooring. It was like, it was sick. So if you're going to camp, sick. you'd do it like that. If you could do 100%, like a- 100%. I, 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 and it had like, and out the front, it's got like a full awning. So you have like- you just have like a nice space and it's it's mm. it's really it's, it's um, even in just camping not, nothing to do with Silverstone that was super fun by itself yeah but um going to see going to see Sir Lewis um jeez going to, to going to see him win yeah, he was he was mad the most obviously yeah. it's been it's been uh three years yeah. know, since he's won previously um and then like it, the rain was yeah. the rain made them the rain made it even more exciting okay yeah because um people you know Drivers didn't know whether it was going to rain. People were going out with different strategies, different tyres. Um, but the first time at the UK Grand Prix where the top three were all British drivers. Come on. And quali. So that was that was yeah. uh, that was fun. Max obviously came to spoil the party yeah, you know, in the main yeah, yeah, yeah. in the main race. A bit sorry for Lando. Lando's my guy now. Yeah, is he your guy now? Yeah, yeah man. I got a Lando hat, and I'm like, oh, because uh, this is what I realised, right? Lewis is moving next year to Ferrari. Yeah. I am not a massive George Russell fan. Okay. All right. So it's out of there. Tainting it. Don't but, know why know. George, sorry, but you know, not that you care. Yeah. But um not the biggest George Russell fan. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna and it, McLaren, British, yeah, Lando. Yeah. Uh, Lando's cool. I love uh, you know, yeah. he's he's got a good he's got a good bounce. I like him. Fair enough. Yeah, so, sim racing. And Lewis has now cemented his space as at the top of the tree, the most is he the greatest he's the goat, isn't it now? I mean people will say like um people will be like, Oh, you call him the goat when he's lost like the head to head to his teammate this year, rare, rare, rare. everyone's gonna have a uh, um, opinion. No, he just had, he just had, but the end won a race for the longest time. And when Max wins now, yeah, apart from like last couple of months, when Max wins, I he's he's, he's just like, oh, good work, guys. Yeah, good work. Uh, that was a good race. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, like my man's doing his grocery shopping list. Yeah. He, he's bored. Like when someone wins. You want to see them like you want to see the uh, outpouring of yeah. emotion. You you, it's, you you get too good, it's boring. You're like, oh, I won again. Yeah, you, yeah, someone yeah. give me a bit of a challenge. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So okay. for that, from that uh, perspective, it's just watching any sports not fun when there's one person who's just ultra dominant. Dominant, unless you're their biggest fan, and then you're like, yeah, yeah, I want to win everything. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it. that's you know, it. Do their yeah, job nice. Yeah. But now you've bought the hat. Yeah, you've got support now. Yeah, I, I I mean I still I still support um I will still support Lewis when he goes to Ferrari because I've always been a Lewis fan, um, but yeah, Lando, 
Lando. Lando's the Mando. Um, <laughs> but you'd recommend the camping vibe, yeah. And um, with those, because of VW camper vans, like, because uh, we've done stuff with camper vans at How to Get on the YouTube stuff before, so maybe stuff in the future. How many people you recommend for one of those vans? Like, two. I would say, I would say for like, for two, it is super comfortable. Mm -hmm. But let's say you went, okay, so if you went as a couple, mm -hmm. if you went as like two friends, one person can sleep on the bed on the bottom, one person can sleep on the bed, calm. You could do four peeps. Mm -hmm. It'll be a bit tight, but yeah. you have the awning outside so you can have chairs out there. You could do four, you could sleep four. Nice. Yeah, and then on the way there, there's only, there's only, uh, there's a front seat, there's two front seats, the passenger seat spins around. Hey, so I it love becomes, that. it becomes part of the living area. Yeah. So, I would say three max four four probably will be a bit tight. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, yeah, but you really liked yeah, it. Yeah. The rental was all good in that as well, and like you enjoyed it. Oh, it, was it was all fun. Uh, it was great. It was great. It was it, like I didn't realize this as well, and you obviously knew this, but I didn't realize that it was a full on like festival vibes, man. Yeah, I kind of really? I kind of mentioned it to you before you went. I was like, Sean, it's it's big, man. It's like I, a day, a weekend yeah, out. I mean, there was yeah, it was the Kings of Leon, Stormzy, Gets, yeah. Um, Rudimental. Pete they Tom. always play there. Yeah, yeah. Tom, I was yeah, man. Kid. yeah. And, and it's like you can I, go I, around I, I, and there's stuff to do before and after that you can enjoy. Yeah, got put out there. Right? Done. After the after the of the quality, it was the England Switzerland game. Yeah, yeah. So they they were like, oh, we're gonna put the game on. Uh, they were supposed to be like drive interviews and bloody blah, blah, blah. So everyone's there watching the game. They had like problems with the like getting it like um, the commentary going through and that, and then goes to extra time. And then the woman gets up on stage. She's like, right, George Russell's coming. Everyone's like, boo, <laughs> boo, <laughs> just like, and she's like, she's like, she's there going, oh my God, I, like, this is the first time I've ever been booed on the stage. Oh. I was like, read the room, <laughs> boo, yeah. And so they did that. Then George came out. He talked for like a few minutes and he was like, yo, the game's still going. Like, what? I'm, I want to watch it as well. Yeah. Let me. So he came and sat, went to penalties. So right, guys, we've got now we've got Lewis Hamilton. I was like, "Are you serious?" Wow, Re bro! The whole crowd is like fifty thousand people, were like booing, yeah. And then Lewis comes out and he starts talking for a hot minute, and then he's like, "What? The penalties are going on now? What? What are we doing? We can do this after." I was like, everyone heavy, was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy. Like, come on, man. Read, read, it's, it's the Euros, yeah, like, yeah. quarters. Like, read the room. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. And I guess, Sean, before we, uh, before we leave today, I guess oh, we've got to we talk should, about... We yeah. should, I've, I'm not going to lie. After it finished, I went, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of what I expected, to be honest. Let's be honest. Spain were the best team in the tournament throughout the whole tournament. They deserve to win the tournament. But, when it comes to one game at the end of the tournament, you just gotta find a way to win and we and we didn't yeah. do that. We didn't do that, unfortunately. We scored a smoker of a goal though, innit? We did. <laughs> little deflection, but we take it. Was there a tiny little deflection? Yeah, it was. It, was oh, it, looked, it looked nice yeah, though, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a really good move. Yeah. And but we didn't do I don't think we yeah. it, it was like one of them ones where like you'd be like, Oh, we deserved it. We didn't deserve it. Yeah. They, they 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 crushed us in the second off. And two one ain't a bad way to go. It's not because we could have got like a lot of people were going, Oh, we'll either nick it or we'll get whacked mm. like it would be like 5-1 yeah, or something yeah, yeah. so wasn't embarrassing to the nation but you know continue the hurt yeah man yeah and, and congratulations to Spain yeah, yeah congratulations to Spain. Well, they, had a good, they, had, they had a good Sunday yeah they, they, won, they won Wimbledon as well no? oh jeez yeah, man yeah, yeah. why does that I swear Italy won the relays you know when we when Italy beat us they like smashed up the Olympics as well we, we just needed well, something else to win at so that we can win yeah. the Euros we didn't have it yeah man I want to know what's in the know. water so yeah so now Italy has spanked <laughs> us <laughs> Spain is fantastic. But I can go back to eating paella now because I was on a paella ban. I was calling it chori. <laughs> I was I was calling it chorito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was smashing over glasses yeah, of rioca. Some, sang oh, some some sangria, yeah. Some, some, some bloody sangria. Wow, I was having a ribena, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so a vimto. You know what I mean? Yeah, but um, we can go back to eating Spanish food now. But Sean, it's been great being back in the studio, bro. Man, as usual. Time flies. Um, please make sure you follow us on all social medias at How to Clean Hour. If you come over from the social medias, this is the first time you're checking the podcast. Welcome. Make sure you send us our jokes uh, over DMs. Um, I'm at Marcus Bronzy on all socials. It's at How to Kill an Hour on all socials. Where can we find you, Sean? Oh, man, you got to start asking me this. <laughs> <laughs> nowhere. Uh, yeah, nowhere. No, yeah, nowhere. Driving, driving a van. Driving, driving uh, a van. transporter. A transporter. Not a bad thing. But to if, but I did maybe last week. So you have to catch me last week. Oh yeah, catch you last yeah, week. Yeah, that's, that's so build a time machine. What year is it? Yeah. yeah!